to the Talent Optimization Podcast, the go-to podcast for CEOs and HR professionals wanting to bridge the gap between the strategy and tactical implementation of talent optimization within their organizations. Through interviews, predictive index, and personal experience, your host, Tracy Shirk, helps you discover the facets of talent optimization from both a CEO and HR perspective to truly create the dream team for your organization. Are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome to the Talent Optimization Podcast. My name is Tracy Shirk, and I'm the Chief Talent Officer here at Elevated Talent Consulting. And today we're talking about culture. And within culture inside of our organizations, I wanted to take a couple minutes and address some of the trending terms that are going around right now. And one of those is quiet quitting. And when you look at the culture specifically inside of your organization, I'm curious, how are you supporting folks quitting quietly? And it's not just quitting with what they're doing, but it's really looking at and saying, are we providing a culture and are we providing an environment where we allow individuals to stop doing the things that they said that they were going to do, right? So this really says, hey, where's the engagement and where's the disengagement happening, right? So if we think about quitting and how we potentially quit on ourselves, there's a hundred different ways that we quit on ourselves. I want you to think about the goals that you have, right? So a lot of times there's goals that you specifically have that you may quit on. Like, for example, you may have a weight loss goal, or you may have an exercise goal, or you may have a financial goal. These are goals that we hear all of the time. And with these specific goals, many times we start with them and those goals are set way, way, way too high, right? Like I like to use the depiction of a ladder. You have one ladder that has rungs that are really close together where it's easy to climb that ladder. And you have another ladder where you've got three or four rungs that are close together. Then you've got a huge gap that's like higher than where you can connect with that. That's going to set you up for failure just in how you set those goals, right? And when you think about this inside your organization and the culture that you're creating with your goal setting, are you setting goals that are unrealistic and unreasonable for folks to achieve? Therefore, they're quitting on themselves and they're quitting on the organization based on the container that you created. And quitting on ourselves is sneaky, right? It's it's sneaky in the fact that we don't realize we've done it until it's way past it. And what I want to challenge you with is how do you consciously make the decisions on what you're going to do and not going to do. And I will name, this is not an original thought of mine. There is a mentor and a life coach out there by the name of Brooke Castillo. Her podcast specifically on quiet quitting is in the show notes here. So I just want to name that, right? And when we quit on ourselves and when we create a container inside of our organization where these items aren't noticed, that creates a culture where you're not hitting your goals. You're not hitting your business objectives. Individuals that, let's say, want to move up that career ladder aren't. And so it's not 100% on you as the leader, as the HR director, as the you know the business owner or the CEO in your organization. It's never 100% on that, right? It is an and both. So when we think about quiet quitting, you know, in this trending kind of phrase that's going out there, I want you to think about how are you quitting on yourself? How are you quitting on your team? And how are you quitting on your organization? And then I want you to flip it, right? Like we don't like to play in the negatives here, but we want to acknowledge it and know that, hey, life's 50-50. There's things that aren't going to be great, but how do we look at those things and learn from them to get to the business outcomes that we're striving for inside of our organization? And a lot of this has to do with the container that we create, that's our culture, that allows our staff to be incredibly successful, right? So when we look at that and we look at that container, how do we create little nudges to ensure that individuals can reach those goals? One of them is by how we set our goals, right? So are you setting your goals in a smarty format? Are they specific? Are they measurable? Are they actionable? Are they realistic? Are they time-based? And are they tied to the why of your organization? So often the why, that smarty, that why in smarty is left off. And if you think about what is your mission, vision, values of your organization, every goal should tie back to that. If it's not tying back to that, guess what? 
it's not necessarily meaningful and it could be a bad goal. So we want to look at what those goals are. When those goals are realistic, especially with everything that's on the plate, and you have the accountability, meaning, hey, I know what every single team member's goals are, and those goals are specifically aligned with what our team goals are. Those team goals are aligned with what your department goals are. Your department goals are aligned with what your organization goals are. When those goals are cascaded in that way that allows everyone to be successful and to meet those business outcomes, guess what? The accountability increases, and it becomes much harder to quit quietly because you're paying attention to each other. You're caring about each other. You're not so focused on your own individual goals that you're not paying attention to what's happening next to you, right? And so when we look at the container that we're creating and those little nudges that we can put inside of our environment, you know, those are things that allow us to reach those goals. So you've heard me say nudge a couple times today. And so there's a theory out there that is specifically called the nudge theory. And I want to talk a little bit about the nudge theory. So nudge, let me just read the definition. As you know, I love definitions. So nudge is pushing gently with someone's elbow in order to attract attention, touch or push something gently or gradually, coax or gently encourage someone to do something, and then Another definition that came from the Oxford English Dictionary is a light touch or push. So when we think about how we create our environments, right, how we create our culture, what is in our culture that kind of nudges folks to be successful in their role, to be successful in obtaining that business result, in obtaining those personal milestones for them? It could be writing a training program. It could be delivering a training program because a personal development goal might be public speaking. So, and then a professional goal might be, hey, we want to do X number of outreach events or, you know, Zooms or speaking at a local organization as a part of what our business development is. Guess what? Those are things that align the personal development goal with the professional development goal that leads into what your organizational outcomes are. So how do you create nudges within the environment for individuals to be successful, right? That's what we want to look at. And this creates the container and this also creates the culture. So what is culture? And we've talked about culture a lot on this podcast. So there's a couple other podcasts that you'll see culture. If you just do a search on that, we'll have a couple in the show notes as well. But you know how we define culture inside of Elevated Talent Consulting is culture is the behavior that's allowed or not allowed to happen continuously inside the organization right? And so are you allowing the behavior of quiet quitting to happen inside of your organization? Are you allowing individuals to quit on themselves and not reach their own goals? You know, that's not something that I know I want to create inside of our organization. I don't think that's something you want to create inside of yours either, right? So we can bring awareness to this and start looking at it and saying, all right, how do we start to create these habits, right? So if you think about James Clear and Atomic Habits, there, there's a cycle here, right? So how do we create habits that j- just build upon each other to get to that end outcome and that goal that we want? And that's essentially what we're doing with these nudges, right? We're making those goals or that thing that we want be visible. We're making those things visible so that it's easy to make that choice, right? We're creating the container for staff to be successful. So, and I've got a couple of items linked in the show notes here that I do, you know, if you're curious for more, there's a whole article and some very specific toolkits on nudge theory, et cetera. But one of the things that I really want you to think about is when we create the container for a staff to be successful and we create a culture where it's high accountability and, you know, we're celebrating those items, guess what? We've set our smarty goals in place. Everybody knows what the goals are. We know what our team goals are, and we are anchoring and adjusting what is specifically needed, right? So we're saying, hey, here's what we're doing. Here's what's great about this, and here's where we're going to adjust. We're available, and we make it available to others that we can essentially do things and do them well, right? Sometimes we're making things fun. So I want you to think about for a second, you know, Some of you have kids, some of you do not. So, but I'm going to use a kiddo thing here for a second. And that is, you know, if you think about 
cleaning up. So if I were to say to my kids, especially when they were little, not anymore because they're teenagers and they laugh at me and that's all right. Um, But when they were little and say, hey, we need to clean up, they're looking at me, they're like, no way. But yet if I say, hey, boys, we're going to play the cleanup game. Are you ready? Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Yes, I cannot sing. But when we put things to things that are fun and we start singing and we make a game out of it. And a lot of times I'll set a timer or I used to set a timer, right? We've just made a game out of that. And we've put little nudges in the environment to get that result that we wanted. Guess what? We do the same thing in our organization all the time. However, a lot of times we're not doing gentle nudges that is just built into the environment. We're doing things that have individuals go, ugh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do that because it it's disciplinary or it doesn't allow me to do my best work, right? So when we think about that, we definitely want to ensure that we've got individuals that have choices and that those choices allow them to be really successful with what they're doing. So let's look at an example of traditional directed or enforced intervention versus nudge intervention, right? So those enforced interventions are direct and obvious. If we think about this inside of our work environment, that may be that that is a performance conversation that says, you sh- don't do that thing. That's awful. Or you've got all your rules, right? It's very judgmental. It's enforcing. Whereas with a nudge, it's non-judgmental. They're typically subtle things, right? Like singing the cleanup song is a subtle thing to get them to do what we wanted them to do. Inside of our work environments, when we have our, our team meetings and we share, you know, what those items are, or we do a quick huddle every morning for 10 minutes and we talk about what we're going to do today and how we're going to celebrate that success. Those are really gentle nudges. They're non-judgmental. They're very helpful and they provide assistance versus enforcing and policing, right? So those are things that are really important. You know, when we are educating and informing individuals versus instructing them with direction, that's another way to do it. So if we go back to our goal setting and those smarty goals that I've talked about, you know, with goal setting, one thing that's important is that we are enrolling our staff in the goal versus saying, here's your goal, go do it. Well, if it's not something that's meaningful to them, they're probably not going to do it, right? Yes, we want our goals aligned, but if they're in the right role, they're more than likely going to want to choose the goals that are aligned with what you as the leader want them to do, right? So that piece of enrollment is incredibly important. How are we enrolling individuals and doing and meeting those things that we want because we have aligned interest? And that is incredibly, incredibly important is that we have the alignment on what we want to do, what we're going to do so we can move those things forward and get them done in a very, very meaningful way. So with that, I want to do a quick recap of what we've talked about today. So we started with you know, what's the culture inside your organization? We know a lot of the clients we're talking to right now are struggling with, you know, keeping staff engaged in the work that they're doing. We know a lot of folks that we're chatting with, you know, are talking about this quiet quitting, you know, and I really want you to think about first and foremost, look at you. Are you quitting on yourself? Are you quitting on yourself in some way in your personal life and or in your work life? Are there goals that, you know what, you just stop doing? Hey, you you had a workout goal and, you know, that workout goal was for a weight loss goal. Did you stop working out? Did you stop tracking what, you know, food you were eating? And yes, that's a personal thing, but then look at what you're doing at work. Do you have work goals and are you hitting those things? Are you following what's on your calendar? Are you doing what's needed to get done to meet those goals and prioritizing those for yourself and for your staff, right? Or have you just kind of quit on it and started doing other things because it's easier? That's what I want you to notice, okay? So we talked about quiet quitting and, and how that becomes a culture and how to shift that culture with accountability with our smarty goals. We talked about different ways to nudge yourself and your staff by building that into the container inside of your organization. So there is a nudge toolkit. We do have some links here for you. So be sure to check out the show notes for that. And then the last thing is, you know, with cultures that I didn't necessarily talk about yet is celebration. When we celebrate our successes, guess what? We're going to reinforce them and have them go even further. And something that I see happen a lot is, guess what? When we discipline, they're getting a reaction for that thing that they did, but yet we don't 
you know, celebrate, meaning we don't give the reaction when things are positive. And I really want you to think about how are you celebrating those wins inside your organization and celebrating them in a way that your staff want to be celebrated so you can hit that done-done goal, right? And I say done-done because there's times we think something's done, but it's not really done because you can't, you know, hand it off to a client or you can't, you know, implement it to get that thing that you want. So what does done done look like? And is that tied in where specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-based and tied to the why of your organization? So, you know, one of the things that I always really think about whenever I'm creating these podcasts is where is this coming up, right? So what we see coming up a lot right now in the organizations that we're working with, let's say it's construction or it's manufacturing, is there was this thought at one point in time that, you know what, you you came into an organization and it was dirty. It was where you're treated poorly, you're cussed at, you're swore at, phones are thrown through windows of construction trailers, you know, all the things that is not a work environment. That's not a culture that we want, right? And so how do we shift that, especially when some of those folks are in foreman supervisory leadership levels inside the organization? Well, we don't shift it overnight and we need to define what is a good employee, right? So is a great employee one that just hits the metrics or is a great employee one that others want to work with, right? This is going to create the culture. And that culture, we're going to nudge things towards that so that we can, you know, nudge towards collaboration and cooperation. And we do that through setting our teams up to succeed. We do that through training programs and mentoring our staff. So as we talk about those things and talk about this culture and those nudging, I want you to think about that. What is the culture in your organization? Is that the culture you want to keep or not? And if not, define current state, and then you're going to define future state. And we're going to set up little goals in order to get there and little nudges that we can put inside of that organization. Remember, we want the rungs on the ladder to be close enough together that they're realistic goals and not these huge goals that we jump to. So with that, really think about what does that culture look like? How do we create it? How do we keep people engaged? And how do we ensure that we're not quitting on that when it gets hard, right? So our takeaway that I have right now for our executives listening in is know the culture you're creating and make it easy for your staff to step into it. Remember, you want natural, small nudges to get there. And guess what? What you want five years from now or even a year from now, you're not going to get to overnight. You need to make those small incremental nudges that don't feel like it's too far of a leap. Otherwise, you're never going to get there, right? And then the next is what is, you know, what is something for our HR listeners listening in? And that is really support your managers. You're typically really good at writing goals. You're really good at the performance management process. Support them in writing those smarty goals with them and in and in enrolling their staff in writing their own goals, right? Because when goals just get passed down, if I'm told, hey, you have to go do this thing, I'm less likely to do it unless it has a meaning to me, right? And I've been a part of creating it, then I'm much more motivated to reach that. So with that, one of the things I want to share with you is we at Elevated Talent Consulting do a ton of corporate trainings. So we do have a 16-week leadership training that includes a whole lot of what we just talked about. We also have some short, you know, workshops, specifically one on goal setting. So if today's conversation resonated with you at all, and you're like, oh my gosh, Tracy, you need to come in and teach this inside of our organization. We do have those available and we'll link to our training page in the show notes. So with that being said, thank you so much for being with us this week. Stick with us for the next three weeks as we talk about culture for the month of October. We have some phenomenal guests that really talk about how they've implemented this inside of their organization and, you know, really influenced and had some significant impact on individuals feeling recognized, individuals being engaged in their work and actually more engaged than than they were before. And that's always what we want to see. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Talent Optimization Podcast. 
you'll find more tools and resources for CEOs and HR professionals looking to bridge the strategies versus implementation gap of talent optimization at elevatedtalentconsulting.com. We've also created a free, valuable resource for you to begin bridging the gap called the Talent Optimization Foundation Membership Program. You can access it for free at elevatedtalentconsulting.com forward slash foundation. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode to learn more about talent optimization and creating a dream team for your organization.